Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps, and now we've got our enclosure for our Micro Bid X build. These things are pretty inexpensive, it's about $17 on Amazon, and it's like for a power supply. This would be good for a switching supply. The steel top and aluminum bottom comes with your uh, sheet metal screws and your feet for it. I've placed the standoffs on the board itself so we can get an idea of our cutouts. All right, once we figure out where we, how we want our circuit board to reside within our enclosure, we need to figure out our cutouts. And we're going to need to cut out for these heat sinks because we're going to need to move this board slightly to the rear. And we do not want the chassis itself to come into contact with these heat sinks. What you do is, is come up with enough space on the side of it and go along this edge and this side and this is going to give you an idea of the width of the cutout you're going to have to make around four and a half centimeters is going to be good where our printed circuit board resides we can look on our straight edge and see that at one and a half centimeters is where our board lays. So now that we have some idea and we have our marks here, we know that our board is going to sit at one and a half centimeters at the base of it. So we go to one and a half centimeters here. If you choose to use the same enclosure that I selected for your micro bed X build, here are the dimensions that you'll need for cutting out your own openings for the display and for the heat sinks on the front and rear respectively. So what we're going to use to cut this out is a tool called a nibbler. A nibbler is essentially a tool that removes metal incrementally and you can follow a straight line with it. And I'll demonstrate it here in a minute and the sections that you're cutting out will fall out here. Now I picked this up from Radio Shack probably I don't know, about 25 years ago. It's a very handy tool for the doing exactly this kind of work. To start the nibbler, you need a 5 16 hole. Take our 5 16 drill bit. Where our nibbler works is, is you just insert it. You can see how it's starting to cut a square slot and you want to follow along these lines and cut this out evenly. We've cut for our display and I did it a little bit big to make it easy to get in and out because it is a perfect fit as you can see here. And on the back side we've got it cut for our heat sinks. We've got our holes punched in the chassis for our controls now and on this side here we're going to have our microphone jack or CW key jack and this potentiometer and on-off switch here is for volume control and this encoder here is going to be our VFO control and again these are going to have knobs on them of course. On the back side we have our RF connector right here which is a BNC and then we have our speaker connector right here which is just another stereo jack and right here is our penetration for our DC cable a DC cable. I've got a grommet that'll go through there and then I'll just have a pigtail coming out. When you're ready to mount your board or mount the standoffs, the way I like to do it is, is I like to set the board up where I want to have it. I remove two standoffs and that means on these two corners here. Therefore the board is in the position it's going to be used and I use a very sharp punch and I carefully go through the board on both sides. Then after making our marks, take your center punch and make your holes. Once you get all your mounting holes drilled, put your standoffs back in your main board and reinstall your main board. One thing that doesn't come with a kit that I recommend for your fasteners is star locks. I use star locks and they bite into the aluminum well and they prevent anything from coming loose. Go ahead and just tighten up your 
slotted screws. Our last foot here is going to be awful close to that screw. So a couple ways to address this. You could leave this screw out and there's still three and standoff's going to be fine there. Or you can do what I'm going to do is, which is use a razor blade and cut off a small corner. The first connector we're going to install permanently is going to be our RF connector. So just go ahead and place it through and then I use a inside star lock. And then there is a ground tab and I'll put the ground tab on. And we place our nut over top of that. Now on your RF connector you want to tighten it down fairly snug. I mean there's no need to torque it down but you're going to want to have it so it's tight and it's not going to come loose. Then go ahead and bend out your ground solder lug and make sure that your center conductor is indexed as such for when you solder it together. Now we'll install our volume control potentiometer and on off switch. So I've placed a inside star lock on around the threaded section and we'll use a 10 millimeter wrench to get it tight. Remember snug is tight. Next we're going to install our encoder and what I've done is I've stacked two external star locks and because the threaded section of the shaft is so large just like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and install my grommet for my DC power. The number six screw and lock nut for the ground of a star lock on one side. I'm going to install my knob on my encoder, which is just a small set screw. The length of the volume control potentiometer shaft is a tad too long, so I'm going to go ahead and shorten it with the razor saw. Install the volume control knob. Well, this completes the enclosure this time. I'm going to, when I do the cabling and when we solder it all together, I'm going to do the uh, the mic jack and the uh, CW key jack and the speaker jack because it's much easier to solder those outside the enclosure than it is in here and then tie that into the audio connector and the uh, logic connector and the uh, encoder and potentiometer. On the back side we have our single ground point screw which we'll tighten that up once we install the DC cable of course and that lock nut will hold that up very tight inside against the chassis and I'll have a wing nut on top of that to hook an external ground to it if necessary. And then you'll notice in the bottom of the opening for the heat sinks, I put some knockdown in there. And this just basically, these small teeth right here, sit over top of the sheet metal. And this totally inhibits the ability of the heat sink to come into contact with the chassis, which is a big no-no in these. In our next video on this radio, we're going to go ahead and solder all the connections together plug everything in, power it up, and put it on the air. I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.